Okay, we'll be starting shortly. So thank you for those that are just coming in. In terms of what we'll be covering today, um, I will repeat this and then I'll repeat it again for those that come into the room in a few minutes. Um, but we're just going to share our impact that we've had as global social leaders. We're then going to have a fantastic student panel and I'm really excited to have three incredible students who are going to be presenting their project to you today. And then we'll be explaining how you can get involved in global social leaders. Um, and, and how you can get involved in the movement. There'll be an opportunity for you to ask questions to our students and, and, hear, and ask them about what they'll be sharing. And then there'll be an opportunity at the end to also ask us about any questions you've got about global social leaders and how you can get involved. We will be starting in about a minute. And as people just starting to come in, maybe in the chat, it'd be really nice if you could just share with us um, whereabouts in the world you are, if you're from a school, what country, uh, that would be fantastic. So I'm joining you here today. I'm John. Um, for those that are already here, you know, I'm Chief Executive of Future Foundations and co-founder of Global Social Leaders. And I'm based in London in the United Kingdom. If in the chat you could share your whereabouts you are in the world, that'd be helpful. So I can also know what time of day it is for us. It's two o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday. <laughs> Daniel, you can tell us what time, what time is it for you? <laughs> for us, it's 8 a.m. 8 a.m. Fantastic. So I'm going to say good morning, good afternoon. <laughs> good morning, yeah. Great. Okay. So we're just getting ready to get started. Um, now we're starting to have people to come into the room. Just want to give everyone a good chance to, to come in in the chat. Uh, we've got Lauren. Hi, Lauren, who's in Canterbury in England. So I think it should be also uh, just after two o'clock for you. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. Um, great. Okay. So um, we will now get started with the webinar. So I suppose a big warm welcome to everyone attending today on a Friday afternoon in England, um, but also from our, for our students, a big warm welcome and good morning to you at eight o'clock in the morning. Thank you so much for joining us today. So what we're going to cover in this webinar is um, a little bit about global social leaders. And then we're going to move on to our student panel and we've got three fantastic students joining us who will be presenting about their project um, and about the partnerships that they've built, but also some of the other development goals that they've been addressing along the way with their project and it's absolutely um, so inspiring what they've done so I think you're really going to be really going to enjoy hearing what they have done. We will then explain how you can get involved um, in Global Social Leaders, um, and then there'll be an opportunity to ask any questions to us about getting involved in Global Social Leaders, and also there'll be an opportunity to ask questions to our students, um, so you can find out a bit more about um, what they've learned from doing it. And, you know, the webinars we're running during Global Goals Week, we've really been trying to put youth voice, our students, our Global Social Leaders at the heart of them, and letting them share what they learn from doing these projects um, so that they can both inspire um, our educators, inspire the students. And this webinar is being recorded um, so that it can be shared and we will be sharing it. And then you can share it with your students and with other educators that you work with. Um, and we really hope that um, this will really inspire action within your schools and communities. So Big warm welcome to everyone that's joined. Thank you, Kavita, for joining us from India. And we've got Uzel, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that um, incorrectly, um, here joining us from Bangladesh. And I can see a number of others that have just been coming to the room. So a big warm welcome um, to you all and to this webinar. Um, um, we will be... Um, shortly introducing our student panel. But what I want to say is that Global Social Leaders has been movement started back in 2013 by Future Foundations, to which I'm the, the founder of Global Social Leaders with Katie Granville Chan Chapman at the Wellington Leadership Institute. And the aim of Global Social Leaders is to develop socially conscious young leaders. 
and to build a community of schools and partners that get behind young people and support them in, in order that they can thrive and make a difference um, in, in their local community um, and then be prepared for to be leaders in their lives and leaders in society. 2021 to 22 has been an absolutely fantastic year for global social leaders and we've had young people delivering projects all around the world um, and that has led to us now launching um, a whole number of new um, programs and courses for next year and I'm going to be sharing at the end of this webinar our plans for 2022 to 23 and how you can get involved but today I really want you to hear from our young people what they've done and the impact that they've had, um, which will give you a true and real insight into the impact that GSL is having on young people and on the communities that they're taking action in. So without further ado, I'd love if our um, students, if you could turn your cameras on and come onto the screen and then introduce yourselves. If all of you can introduce yourselves, that'd be fantastic. Um, and then it'll be over to you to do your presentation. I would just like to say, I've said introduce myself at the start, but I'll just for those that have just come into the room, I'm John, I'm gonna be the host today from Future Foundations and I'm co-founder of Global Social Leaders. And I'll ask uh, Holly to wave to you all. Holly um, is, is, is a Global Social Leaders um, uh, project coordinator and she um, is gonna be co-hosting with me today and supporting uh, the participation um, so over to the team, please do introduce yourselves and then over to you to present. Uh, Daniel, uh, Jakob and Martina, thank you and over to you. So hello everyone, my name is Daniel, I'm from Colombia, I'm from Bogota, Colombia. And today we're going to present you the Enlighten Initiative, which is our project and I'll let my partners present themselves also. So hello, my name is Martina and I'm also from Bogota, Colombia, and we're very excited to present you Enlighten, an initiative that started a year ago with Jaco and Daniel. Hi, my name is Jaco, um, as well I'm from Colombia, and we come from the Colegio Anglo Colombiano, and we're extremely excited to show you our project. So now we'll begin. So the Enlightened Initiative is the project the three of us founded after a humanitarian trip to La Guajira. We noticed a lot of issues regarding the energetic transition and uh, well, how people were living. I, we thought that, for example, solar panels would be a great fit. So now we're going to show you a quick introductory video, which was actually our submission to the GSL competition. So we're going to show it to you and then we'll carry on with the presentation. La Guajira is a natural paradise for all travelers. Its diverse culture and beautiful landmarks make this a magical place and is certainly one of the most beautiful and distinct regions of Colombia. But this is not the reality. 61.8% of the population live in poverty. 15.2% of those who enroll graduate high school. And there is a 28.6% illiteracy. That's right. The Enlightened Initiative is a project we built on the necessities we observed on a tourist trip to La Guajira. We decided to take action to change the panorama. That's why our mission is to contribute with sustainable development committed in the installation and pedagogy of renewable energy under strict standards of quality, solidarity, and social responsibility. Moreover, through the Enlightened Initiative, we address five of the 17 UN Global Goals. Health and well-being, quality education, affordable and clean energy, sustainable cities and communities, and partnerships. Therefore, to achieve these objectives, we partner with NGO Give Power, multinational company Solar for Schools, Solar Power Marketer Spectrum, and the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award in order to fund and execute an earth practice and improve life standards at Puerto Nuevo Community in La project will fund solar panels that empower unprivileged communities and give them access to basic resources such as food safety and storage, water availability, and but our project doesn't stop here. We are currently hosting mathematics and English classes at the biggest school at La Guajira as a part of our cultural exchange program. We currently have 80 students and 10 teachers working with us, but we are estimating an expansion to 350 students and 50 teachers by the end of the year. 
which is a project we are truly passionate about. We have loved what the experience has brought to us. The opportunity to learn about the indigenous culture of La Guajira, including their endangered language, Wayunaki, as well as seeing the joy and laughter from the kids we have worked with, is something truly priceless. Likewise, in order to ensure the future of this initiative, we founded and currently lead the Sustainable Development Club in our school. We have over 30 members from 4th to 11th grade working on multiple different activities such as ecology program, reforestation campaigns, and other notable ecotourism initiatives. But still, we have a long journey ahead of us. Similarly, we managed to establish a partnership between our school and NGO Give Power so that the implementation of solar panels in La Guajira is something that will become recurrent in the future and available for students. Now, our achievement. More than 4,500 individuals impacted, six strategic partnerships established, eight individuals involved, and over 130,000 kilowatts hours generated per year. Empowering future generations. Enlightening initiatives. So, yes, that was our video. It was exactly our digital submission for the Global Social Leaders Competition. So, I think it gave you a an overview of what our project is like. Now I'll hand over to Martina. So uh, when we started Enlighten, we had various motivations, but I think our primary motivation was helping the people that lacked of resources. And as the video said, when we went to a trip to La Guajira, um, we saw the need they had for electricity, they read with light, um, they also like weren't able to do their handcrafts only in the day. So seeing how one light bulb could change all of their life was really impactful. So that's when we decided to embark on the journey to raise funds. And as we raised funds for La Guajira, other projects started to arise in other regions of Colombia, who also had a lot of like trouble, lack of resources, and don't have access to education. And those are Puerto in Boyacá, which is this dot over here, and Chocó, and seeing the impact we, had, we can have um, just by one light bulb and how one light bulb can give them new opportunities, can change their lives and can uh, just see the face, the smiles they light up when uh, pushing the light bulb was is our biggest motivation. So La Guajira, I'm going to give you a bit of context of our motivation and what was the issue we were seeing. So 67.4% of the region lives in poverty, so it's a really high figure. It's actually the biggest figure in Colombia. So we took notice of that, and that's why it became one of our primary focus, these regions. Also, 81.8% .8 don't graduate high school, which is also really aligned with our goals because most of our uh, solar solutions are targeted towards uh, education, empowering schools and internet. So therefore, we wanted to change this figure to get it definitely lower and allow many kids to graduate high school and to pursue a, the, possibly a higher education. Also, there is a 14.16 illiteracy rate, which again, it's kind of the highest in Colombia. So this region is really struck by these kind of issues. Also, they, there is a 58.8% a energy coverage, meaning that there's a lot of households that don't have electricity, as the figure says, like 81. 1,960 households without access to electricity. So therefore, by having a general overview of all these figures, we noticed that definitely energy was the change and specifically renewable energy, which is in this case, solar panels. And just before I continue the partnerships, I just wanted to add that we understand that this is a very, very big issue and we found in solar panels and renewable energy a way not only to fight against inequality, but also fight against climate change. So we really, we, we really like the idea of mixing these two concepts into one project. And I think that's what makes us very unique. Um, now regarding the partnerships, um, we understand that this issue is just an extremely big issue to try to tackle with three high, high school students. So we figured the best way to try to overcome, overcome this hardship was through collaboration and we luckily had a, a excellent company with our side so i'll begin with gift power it has been our main uh, our main partnership and they have found the places and the communities 
uh, we were looking in, uh, to going and they are the ones that make excellent bonds with the community. So they are willing uh, to talk to us about the projects, which as you may understand, um, it's very difficult just to get into a community and try to make a change for them. Um, it, there has to be a sensibilization process and some exchange of ideas and Give Power has helped us entirely with that. Spectrum, I think it's very important also to highlight them because they are the, the people that give us the hardware for us to make the solar panels and clean sanitation at the areas. Um, and we're very happy to introduce our new partnership, which is Global Social Leaders. I think the opportunity of being here and to showing our project is amazing because we're able to show it to more parts of the world and continue to you know, make recognition and try to get even more people involved. Solar for schools, Starlink, uh, those, well, those two are, help, are helping us with the implementation process. And first of all, solar for schools to get education into the solar panels and put it into to put it not also as solar panels, but also as part of education and Starlink with internet connection. Um, Global Youth Mobilization gave us a grant of 5,000 euros uh, to continue to build on our projects and continue to develop new ideas that will continue to impact more people. Um, and I would also like to highlight the TGI, uh, which are our second biggest partnership to date, as they are willing to uh, continue to fundraise uh, thousands and thousands of dollars. And we're hosting our projects in Boyacá and La Guajira, thanks to them. And the International Award, um, well, they, they, they make part of the global youth mobilization and it was on their trip that we learned about uh, the limitations of the place in La Guajira. And that's from uh, where our first revelation to those conditions, this is where our origins and our intention to begin this project began. Um, the Environmental Systems Research Institute uh, is, as we, where is where, that's the name. And we are currently hosting um, a conference very soon in a forum, and we're very excited about that. And we're one of their partnerships as well. And finally, the United Nations Foundation, uh, which we have, where we're, we're trying to communicate our ideas and trying to convince them to continue to expand our project. So as Hakoa just told you all our partnerships, we think our partnerships have been essential to all the progress we have made. So in the first picture, I want to talk to you about um, the cultural exchange. So uh, as you can see, there are the kids with the tablets and without the partnership with Give Power, Starlink and Spectrum, we couldn't have given them the <coughs> opportunity to learn English so they could communicate with tourists. Um, so each uh, Wednesday we meet with them and we teach them the basics of English while we also learn Wayu Nike and learn about how to do their handcraft. Uh, this has been very important. We have received feedback from a kid called Dana that she says that thanks to the Enlightened Initiative, she's now able to communicate to tourists, explain their culture, and actually sell them their little bracelets where it's type of their funds and income. Um, so that that is thanks to gift power and a uh, by putting their solar panel star link by giving them the opportunity to internet and will spectrum also which helped take the uh, solar panels um also we think um this below we can see also two projects that were funded by tgi a tgi is very strategic because tgi is a company that uh, told us that they were willing and able to uh, fund our projects um, so they're the company that make our projects possible and make all our dreams come true. And lastly, we can see our um, our photo here, and, and this is in our school. In our school, we also are, are implementing solar panels because we think it is crucial that schools take part in climate action, renewable energy, and show by example. So we were the ones that promoted uh, implementing solar panels at school. This was done also with Spectrum, a solar for school so kids can have the access to understand actually what's a solar panel, what's the impact they can have, how it helps climate change. And all and well, school has also been like the strategic partnership, which has helped us gone to the international award 
and has always supported us so uh, we can make this initiative possible. Um, I believe that setbacks are what also what define what enlightenment is. If it wouldn't have been for these challenges, I think we wouldn't have gone as far as we, we have gone today. And we'll, how excited we are to continue to expand. So initially, um, TGI is a public company in our country. So the government funds that they are giving us, uh, they have very strict regulations, and we're also obliged to meet some of the some of the sum. So this has been a constant a problem in the sense that we have to continue to work with legal actions as minors and establishing partners with public companies is extremely difficult. Of course, there's a lot of contractual setbacks that we are currently working on, uh, but luckily through our partnerships, which again, I just wanted to emphasize, uh, emphasize the importance of, of partnerships, uh, we have able to overcome all of these challenges regarding government funds and legal actions. And in the terms of connectivity issues in La Guajira, doing our uh, cultural exchange and our math classes and English classes and Wayu Nike classes, um, it was very difficult to get internet working and that's where Starlink uh, was extremely important just to get a better connectivity, a possibility to meet in a synchronous way and uh, to, to be able to work together. And finally, attracting participants for the SDA. Of course, working in the SDA is extremely challenging. And we have four projects going on at the same time. And so it, so it was very difficult to get people that were 100% committed and attracted to our project and had the same philosophy uh, on social impact. So we worked very hard to get more people involved. So lastly, our impact. So our video was a little bit outdated because it was from May, June. So now I'm gonna talk about our recent impact. So overall, we have done more projects, which I'm gonna go more in depth in a minute, but uh, we've impacted around 5,000 individuals where we have done projects on five rural communities, which uh, account for 250,000 kilowatts hour per year, which is the equivalent to CO2 savings of 177 metric tons. So our initial idea was just to do a project in Puerto Nuevo, which was our first target community. However, we then realized that there were like countless communities that needed from solar panels and from our help. So we decided to keep pushing it. We build more partnerships uh, along the way and we'll give power throughout the way helped us. So now we've done projects on five rural communities and we have some more coming throughout this year. And that's how the partnerships have been um, really essential because they ensure not only that we do the first project with good quality, however, that we have a certain continuity and that the project has a certain longevity. So now we're involving the younger kids in our school so that we can ensure that when we graduate, the project continues and it has a legacy in our school. So yes, so apart from the project we initially presented, we have uh, done more projects and all still surround the idea of renewable energy, solar panels, and solve kind of the connectivity issue by giving them not only electricity, but also energy connection. So that's our project. Um, I'll pass on. Fantastic, thank you so much. It was absolutely wonderful and so impressive. And I mean, I was already sort of blown away by what you've achieved. And so just hear the updates today on how you've expanded and the greater impact you have. And, um, you know, just, just hearing your approach to collaboration partnerships and also hearing your challenges and how those have kind of spurred you on to kind of do more and how you've overcome them. I, I think sometimes with projects, actually, it's the challenges, sometimes people get up to those, but actually, if you just get over that challenge, that's where the learning happens. And so that not giving up um, bit it's just so important because it's often like I feel like a mountain that actually you, once you get over the mountain, <laughs> um, you sort of realize how far you've come and actually it can then it starts feeling like pushing water downstream, but you have to 
go up that, that hill to do that. So a massive thank you for sharing. And for, it's also, you know, today's theme is partnerships. And I think you've really demonstrated to us um, you've been able to achieve so much because of those, those fantastic partnerships. So um, thank you for, for spotlighting those, those partnerships and how those have, have really helped you. And I suppose a big well done on securing things. Like you just mentioned things like, oh, and we managed to secure 5,000 euros. Like that is incredible. So you, you secured funding, which enables you to stay focused on the project. Um, and I think sometimes some teams get caught up in fundraising while it, it does sound like you've had some really good, um, successful um, uh, uh, sort of partnerships, which have enabled you then to keep focused and then to expand um, and to have greater impact. So I've got a few questions for you. So I'm going to start asking those. But whilst I'm asking those questions, um, if anybody who's watching today has questions um, for our young people, please put them in the Q&A uh, box rather than the chat. Um, and then we will start to come to those shortly. And um, I suppose the questions I've got, you can choose which of you want to ask the ask or who wants to start. And if, because I'm sure there'll be for, you, for each of you, you might have different perspectives on some of my questions. Um, but I suppose the, the, my first one, that I'm interested in. I've heard about your challenges as a group, but I would like to know what you've learned about yourself. Because <laughs> I think with social action and doing this, um, there's the impact on the community. And um, but but I'm interested in what you've maybe learned that's been interested or surprised yourself. Um, so who you know wave at me if something's come to mind that you'd like to, to share. I, I did see you, Martina, you smiled. So I don't know if you might want to jump in first. Uh, is there something that you've learned about yourself during this journey? Yeah, so I think it's, well, we have the challenges as well as a group, but mm -hmm. I think what I learned about myself is that a uh, persistence, so much like a lot of times, like we did, we want just to give up, like the partnerships didn't come, emails were not responded. So like learning to that type of discipline persistent and like at the end you can achieve their partnership so I think that was very important and also I think I, what I learned about myself is like how gratifying it can be just helping like small communities and other people and and that can really fill me up so most of us think like no like giving giving English classes can be something like very small cannot have a lot of impact but when we are actually like giving them and like Act when like the kids told us what they felt how had the impact of it was like very gratifying so I think I learned from myself that really small actions can really have like have a big change in individual's life and that's like sort of like the type of like things that fill me up like for volunteering I would say fantastic really fantastic. I would also like to respond sorry sorry to cut you there Jonathan. but like before responding what I think I learned about myself, I would like to say what I learned about my country and I like being exposed to such conditions was like transformed a lot of me because uh, being able to to experience from first hand experience what from first hand conditions what um, what like poverty could really be. Um, it was like extremely impactful to me and being able to have this at uh, this opportunity was great to have a greater understanding of the world but in terms of myself on a personal note I would say that I'm just very I, I just discovered that I'm a very hard working working person when I'm very motivated to towards something because even though I work very hard for my school or, or for or for sport um, this has been a completely different story we've been very dedicated to truly make a change and and a really impact a lot of people and the greater amount of people we can. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. I think that kind of untapped motivation that can come when you kind of see, like start seeing the impact of, of, of this kind of project, it, it, it sort of opens your eyes and then it opens doors and then suddenly more opportunities start to arise. And it's not luck. It's almost that by doing those, you know, someone says almost by sowing these seeds, if you do the hard work, suddenly things start to, to, to come up and, um, and those doors open and then, um, and then you get that, that, that excitement and, and um, 
um, almost that that becomes gratifying, I think, as, as Martine said. Daniel, did you want to, to jump in on that one or shall I jump to the next question? <laughs> well, yeah, I think I'll be brief. I think it's exactly what they said. I think we learned that we were quite dedicated individuals. And I also, I think I found a passion not only for social service, but also for renewable energy. I think I found a, a passion and I don't know if I'm going to pursue higher studies in this or something, but I think it's definitely a passion I found and something I learned about myself that I had never thought about before. Fantastic. It's really cool to hear because I mean, I was talking to someone today and I was saying schools often people have passion for like sports outside of, of almost their extracurricular, but actually having the opportunity to kind of explore this kind of passion where you then see that impact and you can work together in a team to, to do something that's um, outside of school, I think is a, it's, it's fabulous. And it looks like you've really been a, a strong team, which um, is, is, is great to see. My, my next question is, is what is the one thing that you're most proud of from this? um experience overall big question well, yeah it's a big question i would say obviously the thing we're most proud of i would say it can be our projects as itself but i think it's the legacy we're trying to build i think i would say that's the most important thing because we haven't done these projects just like to do one and stop, but we have focused on, as I said previously, establishing long lasting partnerships in order to ensure that this will be done regularly and so that they don't stop. And hopefully our school keeps applying to global social leaders and keep getting support. So I think it's actually the legacy and how younger kids are starting to get involved and we're ensuring that this, this type of projects are getting this continuity. And with this continuity, we're obviously impacting the most people possible. So I think it's that legacy we're building, the most important thing, I would say. I don't know if anyone wants to add to me something. I would also add to Daniel, like it's the legacy and also like show, like most of people said that it was very hard for us to fundraise like initially $50,000, try to do this uh, type of project. So like breaking those barriers and saying like, it's actually possible and that with hard work we can do it and not only leaving the legacy we want to leave behind in our school so younger kids can be inspired to like break those stereotypes and like the things people say but also the legacy we're leaving behind in those communities where like now they're able to have new opportunities maybe they can have access to higher education uh they can build more on their dreams so i think those two types of legacy will also contribute to daniel's point um, and I and I would add that I think the most important thing and the thing that we are most proud of, I would at least in my case, is breaking the barrier between thought and action, because like a lot of people may have like good intentions with their ideas or whatever political views, whatever it might be, but there's a difference between thinking about something and actually going out, uh, going into the field and doing it, uh, which is something that I think does, is not as common. And I'm very happy that in GCO we have found a place where a lot of people do that, which is taking action. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing that jumps out of me, like watching your video and hearing your story and also the multi-dimensional elements of your project, that whilst you're waiting for one thing to happen, you've also been taking action in different ways. And I think that can be really motivating um, for yourselves and also demonstrates to others your capability. Um, which then inspires them to support you. So I almost that this is the bit that I, from an outsider's perspective, kind of looking in, you know, it's it's really impressive to see how you're, um, you know, even when you know you wrote in your report how COVID nineteen and what impact that had on you, you know, how you've sort of pivoted and changed, and then also when you've seen the opportunity um, more broadly, and then how you've continued, and also how you've focused in on uh, making this sustainable. I think that's again a lot of projects don't don't think about what is the legacy um what's going to happen you know some people just say right it's my project i want to see the impact and it's all about us you've always really from the start been thinking about what's going to happen when we are involved so um so that that's really cool to hear i'm interested just to kind of take that step back just to understand really why and how you as a group chose <laughs> 
the project and the goals that you wanted to focus on. You chose three, four, seven, eleven, and seventeen partnership with the goals. But 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 yeah, just a little bit more about to just go back to the why and how you uh, agreed <laughs> and was the disagreement at the start. Um, yeah. So well, actually, everything started because we wanted to implement solar panels in school. Um, we heard from one of the directives that they were thinking about the idea before COVID. So then after COVID, we said like, like, well, we should try that. And then we're starting like getting into meetings with the solar panel manufacturer, which was Spectrum and like learning about it. And then just coincidentally, just like they told us about Give Power, like how this, this NGO was installing solar panels for rural communities and then it was just pure coincidence and we just it just kind of clicked we obviously had a lot of interest on on doing something and we were looking on something but we just couldn't find like where to start and then by them telling us about gift power was like the turning point and after this we obviously it was a really long process where the fundraising and everything was really hard to start with and getting the ideas but after we contacted them and they kind of told us what they do and they kind of guided us, they were really, really useful partnership because we, at the end of the day, were teenagers that didn't know anything about this topic. But then, yeah, with the partnerships, they kept guiding us until um, we started doing our project. So yeah, it started with just solar panels at our school and then just kept expanding, expanding, expanding. And every time we expanded we gained more interest so it was a, a really really good process i don't know if anyone wants to add something i forgot yes and also like adding to daniel like i think what also came together was like in as we said in the video like coming back and seeing the difficulties of the regions in colombia so we we're always like wanting to give back so not only like think about like our community solar panels which can be very like very exciting but also like have an impact in other communities who also need that type of like action and 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 opportunities um I, I would also like to add like the question is like why this project specifically I mean I would like to say that solar panels is probably the most accessible renewable energy we had at the time of course there's also wind energy which we even thought about in a moment. I think that re reflects on like the kind of process we made. We had to make a lot of trial and error. We talked to many partnerships that are not included here because they were not like able to work with us. Um, so I think there's a lot of process behind, but I would just like to add that I think solar panels like went along with our values and our, our mission in a very good way in the sense that they are accessible and able to be um like placed in rural rural communities with no prior electricity so we, we really like that concept that's it thank you and i mean we i think we've sort of started to hear it but i just want to see if there's i mean how did your school and teacher kind of support you um with this journey and and then i suppose to follow on from that um is there any further support that you feel has been missing that you would like? And I suppose that also is an opportunity for you to be sharing here today, um, if there's any support that you would like as well. So, so first of what support have you had? And then is there any more support that you're looking for? Okay, so I, I remember to this day, this was a meeting that we had probably a year and three months ago, something around those, those times where we had our first meeting wanted to do an, a social service project with the SDG leader at our school. Apparently there, there's this um, role from a teacher that works in sciences and tries to make SDG projects such as this one, like try to come from school. So in that sense, uh, our school already gave us some education on the SDGs and the importance of like trying to make a change. So I think we're all, we're all very grateful from that. Uh, and just from that initial project, we thought about putting solar panels at school and like do all the process, but it quickly became something much, much more bigger. I would just like to add that I think that part was kind of independent, our teachers, um, like they never suggested us doing a fundraiser for a $40,000 project. That, that, that's just something that came from us. Um, although I think without their help, we, we wouldn't be where we are. And um, 
we also had a lot of like positive views from the school headmasters, from the leadership team of our school. And with every staff member that we shared it, they were extremely excited to hear about our project. So I think even though like they had no big action in it, they always were part of our motivation to make our community proud of what we're doing um, and try to continue to expand it in the Colegio Anglo Colombian. I would like to add to Hako, like we, we like we didn't get that type type of support like at the beginning, like it was very like individual. But I think there was one teacher that did stand out uh, because like she was the one that helped us search for the grants, helped us like um the uh, like search the report and like review it before sending it, seeing the video, like understanding how we were going to like enable all that action. So. I think that that really helped. And also, I think that um, at the beginning, a lot of teachers were very like, they didn't think we would like going to make it. So uh, when we proposed first like fundraising inside school, they like they were not very sure about it. And when we came back one year later, uh, they were very impressed. So then like they were able like now, like it's like a huge amount of money. You're only using a lot of like little amounts. So now we're like here to support you. So I think eh, at first some teachers were not very, they didn't believe we were going to make it, but now like seeing after all the impact, they're like trying to help us and all the way to like finish those little projects that are missing. Yeah, and just to finish, um... I think most of our help and guidance came actually from our partners outside from school, because obviously we had some really great STEM teachers that knew about the science behind solar panels and everything. But at the end of the day, it was Give Power and Spectrum and Solar for Schools, the our guides in this journey, because they were the ones that actually knew how to do these projects, what had to be done and like the quality standards. So at the end, I think our most valuable guidance was actually from them. and. Yes, it was them who kind of guided us throughout all the process and helped us with everything we needed. So that was also an, a really important thing about partnerships. Fantastic, thank you. And that, you know, just brings that theme that we're talking about today that, you know, there's the role of the school, the amazing work that your teachers helped in kind of helping you do that, that research, but ultimately, you know, finding some really relevant, good quality partners can really help the project sort of um, uh, and help sort of fill those gaps in knowledge and experience that, 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 that both a school and young people don't have. <laughs> so when you're trying to do a project like this, having that, that partner is just so important. We've got a, a great question that's just come in from, from Lauren in the, in, in the questions um, where she's also said, just a, a super well done. And I think um, we, we all share that um, and it's so great. And, and we really also appreciate you sharing. Um, she said, has this project encouraged you to think about politics in Colombia in a different way? Um, um, so I just wondered, um, you know, what, what your thoughts were on, on her question. Well, I, I would like to begin to say that politics in Colombia is a very complex issue. We come from a very uh, long conflict of over 50 years. And from behind those 50 years, there's even more conflict and more violence. And I think we noticed in, in our trips to these areas that like violence and like underdevelopment are very strongly related as opportunities are less like we understand like uh, that violence and other type of, of problems will continue to flourish because well not flourish that's not a good word but will continue to expand in the wrong sense of the word um, in the communities. So be, being able to intervene and like get into those areas where, where, where like underdevelopment is such a big issue, it also has a much more stronger societal impact and political impact uh, that one may not even think of when you get into the area. Um, and in addition, we, we, we don't even vote yet. We don't even have like that democratic sense uh, completely nurtured, but I think in the future and looking back to our actions, it will certainly impact our political views and our political interventions in the future. Yes, I would like to add that uh, what we're doing has actually resonates in the political spectrum, because I think 
the problem with our country roots like a hundred years ago and it has been a, pro a problem that comes from inequality and lack of opportunities and i think that's the basis of it all so i think by by doing the types of projects and initiatives we're doing we're kind of fighting to tackle that problematic from the roots and kind of work towards a better society which i think is our way of advocating politically so i think yes our projects kind of resonate throughout uh, the political spectrum and i think they fight towards a more equal society in colombia which has certainly been a big project a big problem through our history so yes i think our our project um, works towards closing that kind of unbridgeable gap and working towards a better society that hopefully can better all the violence and the political issues we have and we face. So I also think to add to like Hako and Daniel, as we went to like the regions, we are, we actually like got hold of the problems and we saw that it's not like one little problem that can be easily, but it's like a combination of problems that actually make it very hard to be fixed and all of them are present in the regions. I think it also showed us that well, the government also has like limited uh, like opportunities to make that impact. So it also showed us that sometimes they have to prioritize, but also it shows us that uh, politics in Colombia also should be like mm, advocated by individuals and try to make a change individually. So you help like the government with corruption because sometimes like the corruption is the one that is not letting the projects develop. So like advocating and trying to like visualize those type of problems in the regions can also help like shape politically Colombia. Fantastic, thank you. I mean, um, I've just got a response there saying so amazing. Um, so I'm gonna bring it up. Um, so amazing to see you, Baron, when you are decision makers. And, um, and I think just just to hear the way you're speaking, I mean, I think it, it's it's inspiring um, and it's so thoughtful. And I think it's also just sets that kind of inspiration to others um, that actually people can make a difference. <laughs> I think there's sometimes that thing where you feel like there's so many problems and challenges in the world. Um, in so many countries that actually, you know, we can't make a difference, but actually some of your teachers and others will thought, oh, will this project happen? It's too big, but actually you went ahead, you stayed persistent and you did it. And then they were like, oh, they came and then they came and helped you with your project. So I think sometimes just, just demonstrating that with persistence, you can actually sometimes overcome these challenges and just takes that energy and then other people then do then join. Um, and th there is this idea of how do you build a movement? And there's this great video on YouTube where it shows people this guy dancing and then one person joins and then another person joins and then everyone's like, oh, everyone's dancing. And then everyone gets involved and starts dancing together. And, and this was a real life sort of experiment <laughs> where people sort of don't are too scared to join until they start seeing success. Um, so I think that 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 it's really um, great to be able to hear from you how you've worked together, been a close team, brought in others, kept going even when you've had challenges. And um, and I'm just going to pull up some words that have been shared in the chat. Congratulations for making a difference in this world, um, um, on our country. You show to young adults how hard work can make a real and positive impact to a community uh, within your country. And I'm very proud um, of you. Well done, you guys are impressive. So I think those words are saying it even better than I was trying to say it. Um, so we're just sort of coming towards the end. So I'm just going to check. I don't think we have any more questions in the in the in the box. So I just want to just like in one sentence, if you could just say what have you enjoyed most about your global social leaders and your project experience? So just very quickly, and then I'm gonna thank you and then just share uh, with those attending. Um, how um, they can get involved. So Daniel, do you want to kick us off? What have you enjoyed the most? <laughs> yes, so well, apart from all of the journey and actually finding this passion, not only in social service, but actually a renewable energy, I think I enjoyed the most the relationships I made across. Like, I think I have a really good bond with my team, with Martina and Hako. But throughout the project, we just became even closer and actually getting to know other people outside from our school that were trying to help us with certain things in the projects. 
I think our sense of networking and connecting was something I really valued. And also, I guess it kind of, um, it's really intertwined with global social leaders by uh, when we apply to global social leaders, because at that end, we just kind of were doing the project, but we were struggling like in the networking, like uh, actually applying, we actually got connected and got to know a lot of projects that were uh, really good. And I could say were even better and more impactful than ours. Some really impressive projects also from other contestants. So actually we think that spring up our motivation and also make it more and more enjoyable. Like also feeling the reward at the end ceremony. I remember when getting our names called out and everything, I think that was a really, really rewarding uh, experience. Fantastic and you definitely deserved it. Martine, your turn. Yeah, so I would add to add Daniel, I also think like the bonds and like how I met people and now creating that sense of community. But I would also say that what I enjoyed the most was making the impact and like actually uh, seeing all the hard work turn out into our reality. Right. Yes, I would agree. Um, well, having the opportunity to share our project is, is an unlike experience. And again, it's extremely connected to the values of GCL and what we're trying to do here. Um, it just we're trying to inspire more people to continue to do action, to make action. So we're very proud and, and very happy for what has come from this. Fantastic. So I would just like to, to just say again, massive thank you to the three of you. You have been fantastic today. You are doing an amazing um, project and the impact you're having is incredible. Um, but also just by sharing today, I think you will, um, you're inspiring others in your school, in your community, even the partner organizations. I'm sure that they're blown away by what you're doing. And I hope that that kind of inspires others to kind of um, do it. And I think the humbleness that you shared as well, Daniel, when you're just saying, seeing the other projects and seeing their impact. Um, I think it's just being open to learning, open to pivoting and changing. Um, so I hope those that have joined us today have been inspired. I know I have been and, and, and Holly as well. Um, I'm now going to share with you how you can get involved in Global Social Leaders. So I'm just going to bring up um, the slides. Um, um, because Global Social Leaders is a movement that supports young people um, to be leaders in their lives and leaders in society. But they can't do it alone and we don't think they should have the whole burden. Um, some people say that it's, you know, it's, you know, young people are going to ones that need to change the world. We think that they have a role to play in doing that, but also everyone else has a role to play in, in supporting and enabling, preparing young people uh, for a future and for a future that we want to make more bright and more sustainable. I think sometimes when you look at the news headlines today, you can get caught up in the negativity and the problem instead of the possibilities and the potential to make a brighter and more sustainable future. So that's what Global Social Leaders is about. It's about helping schools, helping teachers and parents, about bringing organisations and partners in to support young people to be able to be the change that they want to see in the world. And that's what we've been doing. We've been doing this since 2013. And so far, we've supported over 10,000 young people to deliver 3,500 projects. And you heard about one of those incredible projects today. And those projects have been happening all around the world. Um, but we are proud of what we've done to date. But this year, we've actually made a change to Global Social Leaders. So Global Social Leaders historically focused on courses and a global competition. Now we're shifting towards um, focusing on our schools and our schools becoming members of global social leaders and then integrating our project competition within that so that we can really um, um, support our schools to support young people. We are also launching more courses um, and different courses that will focus on different sustainable development goals and themes. Um, so that we can really um, upskill and enable our young people to take action on the causes and issues that they care about. We're also working more closely with our partners uh, to widen access to opportunities. We're launching a future fund which will fundraise for places on our courses and enable schools to take part in global social leaders all around the world. 
And we're doing a call out for more volunteers. We've had over 250 volunteers who have written feedback on project plans that young people have submitted. We've had incredible judges that have been involved in supporting our global project competition and amazing speakers. But we do want to have more to come and join us in supporting our young people to take action. And this change is a framework that we think will catalyze change within schools and communities. And we're asking head teachers in the schools that we work with that they pledge their support to their students and their teachers that are doing this. We, we're going to be delivering more training for teachers to support them in supporting their students. We heard today about how teachers have supported their young people to bring about change. And we want to enable and empower teachers to be able to know and feel like they can do more and know how they can support, but also connect them with other teachers all around the world that share their passion and commitment to supporting their students to take action. Our global project competition is developing to include more feedback, more uh, opportunities to, to access expertise and support. And also we've created a junior and a senior framework. So we'll be recognizing more teams um, for their impact. We're creating additional opportunities for um, our partners and we're also launching uh, a number of new courses this year. So many of our students have been on our Catalyst course. It's the course that we've run now for many years. And those we've got two of the opportunities for that this year in October and in July. We're for the first time launching an alumni program for that course. So those that have done the GSL Catalyst can take part in our accelerator program to really develop those social action skills. And we're particularly excited that we're going to be launching new courses. They're going to teach young people how to campaign on the issues they care about. Our first one takes place in November, and that's focused on climate action. And that's also taking place alongside COP27. Uh, and that will support young people to, to take action on, um, in a collaborative campaign around uh, climate action. Later in the year, or into 2023, we'll also be doing one on, on, on health and well-being as well. Um, and on quality education. So those courses are coming over the year. And we're continuing to build our partnerships and relationships. And we've worked with some fantastic organizations since launching Global Social Leaders. Many of those partners are named here today. And we are excited to be working with others that are coming on board. Our call for Global Goals Heroes is expanding to encourage um, more volunteers to get involved in our new masterclasses and our, ex our uh, Ask the Expert events that will be coming. Um, we've got, I think, one more webinar that you can join. So we're just coming to the end of our webinar series and that webinar will be on Monday. Um, that was moved from last Monday um, to next Monday. So please do, if you have not registered for this one, please do join us on Monday for our focus on good health and wellbeing. And that'll be a project that's been led by students from Eton College in the United Kingdom. So we invite you to join us. If you missed any of the webinars that we've been running for the last week, don't worry, they've all been recorded like today's and we will be publishing them. So you also, if you've enjoyed today's and would like to share it with your students, you will be able to access uh, this when we publish it and you'll be able to share it wider. So I'm just about to draw to an end. So I will do another thank you to Holly for hosting us and making sure that everything's worked today. Thank you so much for your support and to our wonderful students, you, Daniel, Jacobo, and Martin, you have been fantastic. You are an absolute inspiration. So thank you to you um, and to our guests that have joined us today. Thank you so much for coming and listening. We do hope this has helped you understand and be inspired by what young people can do, the impact that they can have and the journey they go on. And if you've got any last questions for us, we'll keep the room open for another couple of minutes and then we'll close it. So you can ask a final question about GSL in the Q&A box, um, but also do just get in touch um, by contacting us at social.leaders at future-foundation.co.uk if you've got any questions about getting involved in uh, global social leaders. And I'll finish by saying, um, drawing attention to the uh, chat box uh, where are some of our guests have said thank you and wonderful project, congratulations. So yeah, a big congratulations and thank you. And you know, I think it's now coming towards nine o'clock in the morning for you. So I do hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Um, and for others, um, have a fantastic end of their day and weekends. Any final questions? I'm just looking at the chat box. I don't think so. So I'm gonna say it's three o'clock.
in England. Thank you for joining us today. Please do join Global Social Leaders. Help us catalyze change in schools and communities. Together we can make a brighter future for all. Have a wonderful rest of your day and weekend. Bye-bye.